So let's continue the last video and let me show you that how we are going to achieve the one to one chatting functionality. So let me give you a PowerPoint presentation for it. So remember, I told you that we have a socket server. Okay. So we have the socket server. And now I told you that we have now four users. Devistack, Collins, Kishore and Balram. Treat it as a socket IO client. So we have one socket server and all our we have is a socket IO client. So basically if Devstack will send a message to Balram then how it will going to do that first Devstack send that message to the socket IO server and that socket IO server will send that message to the Balram router. Okay. Similarly if Balram wanted to send a message to the dev stack then it will going to send that message to the socket server and socket server will forward that message to the dev stack. Okay. That thing will apply on a other user as well on a Collins or a Kishore. If dev stack wanted to contact with the Collins so it will go on a uh, socket server then socket server will forward that message to the Collins. So this is the overall thing that how we are going to achieve the one to one chat functionality to achieve that thing so let me just end it and let me go on a code to achieve that thing here in the individual chat page what we are doing that we are connecting this app to the socket IO server okay so every app will treat as a socket IO client so if we have a four user, then we have a four app installed on a respective devices. So each of the devices will connect to the socket IO server. So that is the thing. So here, what I'm going to do that if a person will come on a individual chat page, okay, if I will go on a Balram to individual chat page, then I'm connecting this socket IO client to the socket IO server at the same time I'm going to provide the ID of the server I mean ID of this this socket IO client so 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 let me explain you like uh, in the last video we saw that if I will select the dev stack then this app is act as a dev stack user and every user have the unique ID I assign the unique ID of the every user so I have to send the unique ID to the socket IO server that dev stack is just registered with the socket IO server. So how we are going to send the unique ID of the dev stack to the socket IO server. Remember in a login screen we sent these chat models from the parent class to the child class. Same pattern we had to apply here. Remember, I told you that I uh, save the, the removed chat model on a source chat. That's why I put the name of the variable source chat because the object I removed from the chat model will act as a source. Okay, so in the source chat, I mean, if I'm selected the dev stack, so that source chat will contain the object of this dev stack and it have the id so we have to use this id while connecting the socket io server at the same time we have to send this socket io client id to the socket io server so socket io server can understand that dev stack is communicating with me okay and how we are going to get that uh, id so for that what I have to do that I have to pass that source chat object from the login screen to the individual chat page. I know it's very complex to pass from the parent to the uh, leap node, but we have to do this thing. Because of that only we use generally a state management like block pattern and anything. But as of now we are not using that thing so we have to apply this thing like we have to pass the object from the parent node to the leap node okay so the last in the last video we did the same thing first we went on a home screen and in the home screen i'm going to create a, a chat model 
object i'm going to create a chat model object the name will be a source chat again and i'm have to call this thing on the constructor because we will get the source chat from the login screen to the home screen on a constructor itself and let me pass uh, another variable here called source chat and i'm going to pass this source chat which we got okay now we pass this source chat from the login screen to the home screen now we have to pass the same source chat from the home screen to the chat page okay so if i will go on a chat page again i have to create a new variable called source chat and i have to initialize that thing i know it's it may be complex but uh, yeah we have to do this thing otherwise we will not get the source chat id then we will get that source chat from the home screen to the chat page so remember i had to pass it on a constructor so source chat and how we will get the source chat with help of the widget dot source chat okay now we pass the source chat from the home screen to the chat page and now we have to pass it on a custom card <laughs> here we have we are using the custom card and we have to pass it on a custom card it's a new child class okay so here i'm going to pass the source chat okay so i'm going to get this source chat using the this dot source chat <laughs> okay so how we will get it from the chat page we have to pass it as a source chat just don't forget that we are passing the variable from the parent node to the leap node so that's why it's uh, it's it's taking time so we pass it from the chat page to the custom card and the only thing we have to do that we have to get on an individual chat page so the last thing in the individual page i'm going to create a new variable called source chat and i will get that variable from the custom card which is the parent class of this individual chat page maybe it will be a confusing for you but because of this whatsapp thing only it it i mean we have to pass it from the parent class to the child class so it 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 it's something kind of confusing but it's very easy so in a custom card let me go on a custom card file so in a custom card here we have to pass the source chat the source chat we are getting because it's not a stateful class that's why we can directly access this source chat which we are getting and now we got this source chat i mean the the actual user which uh, who uh, we, who the app is representing i mean the act, the dev stack uh, user we got it here in a source chat variable and now what we have to do we have to pass it to the socket io server okay at the time of registering so here we connected the socket io server okay and here we are just emitting the slash test so what i'm going to do instead of the slash test let me use this sign in and uh, we don't need this slash and in the sign in event i'm going to pass the id of the socket io client which is the dev stack id okay so widget dot source chat we got from the parent node and every chat model have its own id that's why the widget dot source id and i'm going to pass it where i'm going to pass it on a socket io server with help of the sign in event so if i will go on a backend so here in a backend remember we created this slash test event so instead of this slash test event i'm going to use the sign in event so we are listening on a sign in event and in a message we will get the id okay so in a message we will get the id how we will get it so so let's console log first and uh, see okay so let me just refresh the page and uh, after refreshing the page okay after refreshing the page 
if I will select the dev stack, the ID of the dev stack is one. So dev stack, and uh, if I will click any of the card, then oh, I forgot to save this file first. So now, if I will again go back, and if I will select any of the card, then the ID of the source will come here. See, the ID of the dev stack is came here. Okay, now. As I told you that we have a multiple client and we wanted to sign in all of the multiple client to the socket IO server. So socket IO server should know that how many clients, I mean how many users are connected with it and how we will know that. To know that I am going to create a new variable. Okay. Clients. So it's an empty object as of now. In this empty object, we are going to store all of the client's data. So whenever a socket IO client will connect the socket IO server, at that time it will give the object. So this is the object of the client. Okay. With help of that only, we are sending the message. I mean, we are listening the message on the particular socket IO client. Okay. And we are using the socket dot ID, but the socket ID is something kind. Uh, I mean, it's a randomly generated ID. So instead of that, what I'm going to do that we are getting the ID of the each user in this message. So let me just change it to the ID because we are getting the ID on this sign in event. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this socket object so as of now this socket object is the object of the dev stack socket io client so i'm going to store it on this clients so with help of the id which we got and uh, i'm going to store it so the clients is a object okay so client is a kind of a map type of object and the the key of this map is the id and the value of this map is the socket which we are getting so if uh, let me just uh, console log then you will get a better understanding that what is inside the clients as of now whenever a new user will be signed in. So for that, I'm going to go back and I will go on a, again here. Then automatically the sign in event will be called here. That's why we are getting the data in a backend. So if you analyze it, then you will find that this is a ID which we are getting from the front end and this is the client object so in the clients we have key one which is the id and this is the socket object which we will get whenever a new socket io client will be connected to the socket io server so this socket object is actually a socket io client which is made whenever we connect a socket io client to the socket io server so the information of this socket IO client will go here and we are storing that information in a clients variable. Okay. Similarly, if I will log in using the another user, okay, then the socket IO will store that thing. I mean, if I, if I will log in using the uh, Kisor, and I will connect with help of this Kisor ID, then that particular socket IO client again is stored in a backend. So at the same time, if we use the four devices, Balram, Devistack, Kisor and Collins, and at the same time, if they will connect to the socket IO server, then the four object will be stored on this client's variable. And the structure will be like this, the key will be the ID, and the socket object we are getting at the time of connection will be the value. Okay. Now 
everything is clear i think so and let's work on the emitting the messages from the front end to the back end okay so to emit a message we have a socket dot emit uh, option so uh, if balram rator in a balram rator we wanted to emit something so i will going to create a new method void send message so what are the thing i had to provide i had to provide a string of the message the message i wanted to send to the balram rator from the dev stack user and also i have to provide the source id which mean who is sending the message as of now if i will click this button then the dev stack is sending the message and i also have to provide the target id which mean whom i wanted to send a message as of now i wanted to send the message to the balram rator and the id of the balram rator is the 4 okay with help of that what i am going to do that i am going to use the socket dot emit and i have to provide the event name so let the put the name the event name as the message and what object i want to to send so let me send a json object so i want to send a message which is the key and uh, the message i will get i will send it here i want to send also a source id so source id will be key and the object i mean the value is the source id and i, I also wanted to use the target id target id will be key and the target id is the value okay maybe you confuse something so in a socket dot emit this is the event name we tell of this event name we will listen it on a socket io server and we are sending this json object so message is the key and this message is the value which we are getting while calling this uh, method and when we will call this method so we will call this method when we click on this uh, button okay so let me go on a button so here this is the mic button okay so here only we implemented that send button functionality and here we will call this method okay send method so when we will send the uh, value if send button is true okay if the send button is true then only we will send the message to the back end because otherwise we will not have any kind of data here then it's not a meaning to send a message to the back end okay so i will call this send message and i have to provide the message which we wanted to send and how we will get it remember that we created a controller okay the text edit controller and we assign that text edit controller to the text form field so whatever we will type here we will get with help of this text edit controller so the first thing we have to send on a send message button is the the text and the second thing we have to uh, give as a parameter is the source id and how we will get the source id with help of the widget dot the source chat dot the id and the next thing we have to send is the target id and how we will get the target id remember we are getting also another chat model another chat model object from the chat page so if i will go on a chat page then you will see that we are using the list view dot builder and we are sending the individual chat model of the individual user uh, i mean which user we are interacting suppose we are interacting with the balram rator then we are sending the balram rator chat model okay 
so we will get the target id with help of the widget dot chat model dot id okay so now we are calling this same message method with help of this button okay so and we are emitting a event so just like this event this socket dot emit just like this event we have to listen this event on a socket io server also so let me call i mean just copy this event and let me go on a socket io server and uh, just after this socket dot on event i'm going to create a new event which will be a socket dot on the event name and the message we are getting and it will going to return a method and as of now let's simply console log the message what we are getting from the front end okay now i will go here and i let me check i just saved it or not and let me just refresh the page or we don't need to refresh the page we just have to call this method okay so let me just write something message over here hey there okay just go me let just once go me back and let me come here and hey there let me use it and you can see that we are getting that message on a socket io server okay so we are sending this thing and we are getting it and the source id is 1 which is the dev stack id and the target id is 4 which is the uh, balram rathor id okay everything is coming fine and now we have to utilize this message and again we have to send this message to the balram rathor i mean we have to send it message on a target id 4 okay so let me go here and just let me just fix it one thing just after this send message i will use the controller dot clear to clear the message okay let me do so and if i will send hey there again then the message will be cleared okay so everything is working fine now we have to send this message from the socket io server to the corresponding uh, socket io client and we are going to do this in a next video till that happy coding thank you all and please show your support please like the video share the video to your friend and don't forget to subscribe it because your one subscriber count or your one like or your one comment will motivate me so please don't forget to like share and subscribe Okay let's meet on a next video